Hi, my name is Sarah Saldana, and today's date is February 14th, 2018, and in this video I'm going to be setting up the first part of the salt tolerance testing using the 1%, 5%, I'm sorry, 1%, 7%, and 15% NACL solutions. So, I'm going to go ahead and lower this so you can see what's going on. I've got both my culture broths here, and in this test tube rack, I've already labeled six different broths, 1%, um, 7%, and 15% of the NACL S. epidermis, and then 1%, 7%, 15% of the um, NACL S. cervici. So I've got my pipette soaking in alcohol. Oops, maybe I should do this in. I'm going to go ahead and light this candle so we can sterilize the lips of the tube. Go. Awesome. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the lids for the S. epidermis tubes. I'm going to leave it on just a little less tight there. And what I'm going to do is since I'm starting with the S. epidermis, which will be this one, <clears throat> go ahead and I'm going to open this. Oops. There you go. I'm going to shake off the alcohol from this pipette that's been sterilizing for a couple minutes. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to sterilize the lip of this culture broth to make sure there's no other microbes contaminating it or getting on in the sample. Okay, now that that's sterilized, I'm going to remove the lid of the first NACL solution. And now sterilize this lid. That's so. Okay. Now with this, I'm gonna go ahead and, like I said, pivot two drops of the S. epidermis into this sample. So we've got a one to two. Now I can go ahead and sterilize this lip again. And cap this back on. So there we have the 1% NACL S epidermis. <clears throat> Next here I have my 15%. So same thing, sterilizing this lid. Oops, I have to relight this. <clears throat> Struggling here to light. All right. So again, just sterilizing the lip, the tube here. Still have enough for two droplets. One, two. Sterilize it again. Wow, I keep having it go out. This flame isn't very bright. Probably because it's a newer candle, I tossed away the old one. But here we go. Go again. All the way around. Perfect. Now I can reseal this one. All right, and the last one I'm going to show is going to be the 7% NACL S. epidermis. <clears throat> so you can go ahead, sterilize that lip. I have enough for at least two droplets, I believe, in here. Yeah, there's one, two. All right, so now I can go ahead and get rid of that pipette. Oops, sterilizing it again before recapping it. In there. So now all three NACL solutions for the S. epidermis broth are prepared. Those will be inoculated for 48 hours. Right now I'm just going to go ahead and re-sterilize the culture broth. 
before I recap it. All right. Um, after 24 hours, I'll go ahead and check on all the NACL solutions. <clears throat> um, after 24 hours, there should be a little bit of turbidity, but 24 hours, I'll definitely do the check to see if there's a positive or negative result. Um, so pretty much, I'm going to be doing the same procedure you just saw with the s service I and the um, three NACL tubes. Hi, my name is Sarah Saldana, and today's date is February 16th, 2018, and it has been 48 hours since the incubation of the NACL solutions for both bacterium, S. cerevisiae, and S. epidermis for the experiment salt tolerance testing. Um, so just going over some results, I was going to start off with a 1% um, samples that I have. So pretty much... Um, any growth seen in these tubes will appear. Um, there will be some turbidity, so it's a little cloudy, um, and a clear broth indicates um, a negative result. So with that said, I have the 1% NACL solution here. Um, let me see. Yes, so this is definitely clear. Um, on the outside, <laughs> there appears to be like a little bit of a substance. That could have been maybe from during, um, before incubation. But the broth inside is clear, so that's a negative result for the 1% NAS epidermis. <clears throat> On the other hand, for the 1% NACL of the S service I, we can see it's definitely a little more cloudy. There's some growth there, so that's a positive result. For the 7% S epidermis, again, it's clear, so there's a negative result. For the 7% NACL, it's a positive result. It's not as clear. It's definitely showing signs of turbidity. And then for the 15% <coughs> S epidermis, again, that's it's a little... On the bottom, there appears to be a little bit of growth. Very small. For the most part though it is pretty clear for the 15% S epidermis. And then for the 15% NACL S service I, here we have um, definitely some turbidity. So that's another positive result. So pretty much overall all the S epidermis um, samples here are negative and the S service I samples are all positive. Hi, my name is Sarah Saldana, and today's date is February 14th, 2018, and in this video I'm going to be doing salt testing and pH testing. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and lower this. I've got my six nutrient broths labeled S. epidermis pH 5, S. cervici pH 5, S. epi, S. cervici pH 7, and S. epi and S. cervici um, pH 9. So, what I'm going to be doing, I won't be doing anything right now with the um, pH 7 neutral broths, but I'm going to go ahead and take S. epi pH 5. I'm going to remove the lid. I'm going to sterilize the lid here by running it through this flame. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to get my HCl solution here. Remove that lid, 45 degree angle. All right, so now that I have my HCl over here, I'm going to add one drop to this SFEPH5. So there's one. I'm going to put that away. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sterilize and refix the lid. All right. There we go. Now I'll take S service I, pH 5, and do the same thing. <clears throat> Here, I'll sterilize it. And adding one drop, HCl. There we go. 
back down and then sterilize it again. There we go. Okay, perfect. So again, like I said, skipping S epi and S servici pH 7, I'm going to go ahead and grab S epi pH 9. Sterilize the lip of this tube using aseptic techniques. All right, now that that's sterilized, now instead of the HCl, I'm going to grab my NaOH, sodium hydroxide. Cut that at a 45 degree angle, and I'm going to place one drop of NaOH into the pH 9 of SFB. There we go. Put that down. We sterilize. And then put the lid back on. <clears throat> now I'll do the same thing for S service I, pH 9. There we go. Now at the same time, I have two pipettes right now soaking in alcohol. So sterilizing that. Go ahead and add one drop here. Okay. And that is good to go. So, like I said, I've got those two pipettes right now ready to go. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipette two drops of active S. cervicii and S. epidermis into each of the three broths correlating with the right bacteria. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with S. cervicii. So this one, the pH 7 nutrient broth, will be participating in. All right, there's S service I. Here's my S service I pH 5. So again, sterilizing it. Can go ahead and grab this pipette here. Shake it dry. Now I'll get two drops into here. So there's one, two. Awesome. Go ahead and sterilize before reapplying the lid. All right, so my flame just went out, so I'm gonna go ahead and relight that again. So now this will be the first thing going into the S service I pH 7. All right, grabbing that same pipette. I've still got some in here, enough for two drops. One, two. Sterilize this again. Okay. Try to make sure it's properly tight. Okay. And now we've got S service I pH 9. So let's be the last one for the bacterium S service I samples. There we go. Again, I probably still have enough for two drops. There we go. Sterilize it one more time. And that'll be the end for the S service I pH tubes. Alright. Perfect. And then last but not least, the last thing to do is to just Sterilize the active culture broth before I go ahead and place that back for future experiments. And pretty much what I'm going to do, um, 
I'm going to do the same procedures for the S. epidermis and uh, all three pH correlating tubes. And afterwards, they will be inoculated for 24 hours, and then we'll go ahead and check the results. Hi, my name is Sarah Saldana, and today's date is February 16th, 2018, and this is the results part of the salt tolerance and pH testing experiment from this week's lab. Um, so I've got my uh, six sample of broths here, which have been incubated for 48 hours. I've got both S. epidermis and S. cervici pHs 5, 7, and 9. Um, however, as right now, I was looking at my results looking at the uh, the broths. I'll go ahead and show. So these are all the S. cervici samples. You can see they yielded like a positive result because there's a little bit of turbidity that's the sign of growth. But here are all my S. epidermis um, broths. They're for the most part very clear indicating a negative result and I had this also um, like similar results for the first part of this lab, which was the salt tolerance testing um, with the 1%, uh, 7%, and I believe it was 15% solutions. Um, so I'm kind of wondering if maybe um, the growth that I'm seeing is from the way these samples were uh, like conducted, um, if maybe my bacterium uh, broth is just um, maybe what's making it cloudy. After I did put the broths in the tube, um, the S. cervici uh, broths for both experiments seemed to be like a different color. Like you could just tell um, the turbidity was already there. It's definitely grown more since the 48 uh, incubation period. Um, so I'm definitely gonna have to go back and look in my results and see if maybe there were was some error as far as um, the procedure and um, you know observing growth of the bacterium. But for now, those are my results. All positive results for the S. cervici samples and negative results for all of the S. epidermis ones.